To delve deeper into the historical context of today's actions, we are joined tonight by Duquesne University president and law expert Ken Gormley. Mr. Gormley, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be with you, Megan. You have said in the past impeachments come at a high price. What do you mean by that? Well, they're, they're a draining thing for the country. They take a lot of emotional energy. They push people apart. But also, they tie up all three branches of government when you think about it. Congress, the executive branch, the president, and ultimately the Supreme Court for a trial. So they come at a big cost. No one wants to have to be impeaching a president. But sometimes these moments happen and are necessary. What options does President Trump have as this unfolds? Well, at this point, uh, the, the die is cast. He has been impeached by the House. There will be a delay, most likely, until after President Biden takes office before this is formally transferred to the Senate because they're in recess until uh, the 19th, so it will take some time. Uh, it could take much longer than that. President Trump's best bet would be to try to lay low, pack up his belongings, and frankly, move to Mar-a-Lago and stay out of the way. I think the more that he re remains a, a person who is sort of agitating, the more people are going to be reminded why they feel they need to convict him and make sure he doesn't run for office again. But uh, I, I think the best thing President Trump could do would be to accept the results and try to move on. Republican lawmakers today described this as serving absolutely no point, saying it will never succeed in the Senate. What do you say to that and what happens next? Well, it does go to the Senate next, and it's anyone's bet. As we know, uh, Senator Mitch McConnell has signaled he hasn't made up his mind, and he there, it's clear there will be some Republican senators voting. It's not clear what the outcome of this one, unlike the last one, will be. And I have to say, there is a lot at stake for some Republicans who feel that President Trump, they feel that he wrecked their chances in the Georgia Senate race, that he will be an impediment to the Republican Party going forward. So they're making a lot of calculations about what is in their best interest at the same time. I think it will depend, Megan, on how many donors and uh, you know significant public figures withdraw support from candidates because they continue to support President Trump. That puts pressure on them. So a lot will play out. The fact that a bunch of 10 Republicans sided with the Democrats today is an ominous sign. That means this isn't over. Could today's vote for impeachment in any way impede President-elect Joe Biden's new administration as they're coming in? Absolutely. This is not what a new president wants. I interviewed President Ford about his pardon of Richard Nixon, and he was keenly aware that if the Watergate case continued and Nixon was prosecuted, that would disrupt his administration getting off the ground and focusing on its priorities. So I'm sure President Biden, and he's not built that way, is happy about this in one sense. On the other hand, it's important. This was so extreme, uh, a president encouraging a mob to go to the Capitol and halt the results uh, being tallied of the Electoral College. It's unprecedented in American history. And there comes a point where uh, a statement has to be made, and I think that the Democrats today made that statement, and we'll see what statement the Senate Republicans have, because if they do not remove him, uh, he will continue to potentially run for office, which may concern quite a few Republicans as well. Impeaching President Trump was one path, but many people today are saying that there is a case to be made for just moving on. Is that possible, or are we, are, are we already past that? We're past that one at this point, Megan. Uh, you know, the fact that the House is swiftly impeached and the founders set up the system to be able to do that, I think that there's no turning back. And I think that you're bound to see bipartisan votes in this one to remove President Trump. It's just a question of whether the required two thirds, which is a high bar in the impeachment of Andrew Johnson, you may remember, he escaped conviction by one vote. So this is not going away. Uh, it will play out after the inauguration. Hopefully things will be calm and, uh, you know, safe throughout that process and the country can begin to heal after this. I think the Democrats feel that this is necessary to allow the healing to begin. Mr. Gormley, thank you and have a great night. It's always a pleasure. Keep up the great work, Megan. Thank you.